Today, we are going to be learning about the artist Bebo. Bebo is a folk artist, or as he likes to call himself, an outsider artist. He says, I make art out of lumber and found materials. I sculpt the wood with my saw and sander into fish, snakes, gators, and more. I paint them using enamel paint so that the pieces can be hung outside. I also make angels and signs with inspirational messages on them. God has blessed me through my art. When Bebo creates his birds, he uses lots of shapes. Shapes is an element of art. He uses geometric shapes like squares, circles, diamonds, rectangles, triangles, but he also uses organic shapes. Organic shapes are found in nature, like the shape of a leaf, or a cloud, or a feather. So to make our bird, we will be using both organic and geometric shapes. Before we start painting our bird, we want to think of the composition of our paper. The composition is the placement of the elements of art. So when I'm thinking about the placement of the circle of my bird's eye, I know that I probably don't want to put my eye at the bottom because then I wouldn't have enough room for my body. I don't want to put it all the way at the top because then I wouldn't have enough room for the top of my bird's head. I think I'll put my eye just above the middle of my paper. So I'm going to take my thin paintbrush and my black paint, I'm going to dip it in. I'm going to be using my paintbrush like a ballerina. I want her to stay on the tippy top of her toes, but I don't want her to sit on her bottom. So I want her to stay just like a ballerina on the tip of her toes. So I'm going to get some paint and I'm going to paint a dot for my bird's eye. This is a geometric shape. It's a circle. Okay. Now I'm going to paint a circle around my eye. That is for the eyeball. And I'm going to paint one more circle. Again, it's a geometric shape, and this circle is going to be for the shape of my head. So it's going to be a little bit bigger, and see how I have a little more room at the bottom than I do above my eye. I think I want that to be a little bit of a different shape, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to be filling this in. And I'm going to paint this in. So now I'm going to think about the body. I'm going to paint a diagonal line. Remember a diagonal line goes either from top down to the bottom or from the bottom upwards. I'm going to go from upwards, downwards, down from my, or up from my head, downwards. So I'm going to make the back of my bird with my diagonal line. And then I'm going to make a half circle for my belly. And when I'm happy with that shape, I'm going to fill that shape in. So Bebo often uses some lines to create texture and with the end of the brush. So I'm going to use my end of the brush to create some texture for my bird's wing using the end of my brush. So cool. Now I'm going to think about my bird's beak. I'm going to use a 
geometric shape, a triangle, and I'm going to make that triangle with two diagonal lines. There's one and two. I think I want my bird to have an open mouth, so I'm going to make one more triangle. One, two, diagonal lines, and there we go. Now, I need to do my legs. I'm going to make two lines for my legs. I kind of want them to be curvy. And then I'm going to add some little toesies. I think I'm going to add three toesies. Remember, if you mess up, you can make a happy mistake a few different ways here. You can paint over it and make it into a bigger shape. You can turn it into something completely different, but it never helps to cross it out or completely mark it out. So when you're finished with the body, the legs, and the feet, you can be thinking of some details. Maybe your bird needs some feathers. Maybe on his head or on the back of his tail. Birds have tail feathers that help them balance. These feathers repeat like the head feathers. Lots of times artists repeat something on their artwork. They do this because it creates interest in their artwork. I'm going to add some feathers onto my bird's head. And I'm going to repeat this on my bird's tail because remember repeating something makes my artwork a little more interesting. Repetition is an element of design. Okay, so now I'm going to start decorating my background. I'm going to use lines to make a border. So you can use squiggles, you can use dots, you can use broken line. You can use any kind of lines you want, but we're going to use that to make the border here. So let's see. I'm going to use the black because that echoes or repeats what we see in the black of the bird. And I'm going to use some squiggles. Finally, I'm going to take some white and I'm going to add it to the very background. So I'm adding a, pat, a pattern. Again, a pattern is repeating that word again. And I'm just making it more interesting. I'm not painting on my bird because I want him to really stand out. Just adding it here and there into the background to give it a little extra something something. And there you have it. Our masterpiece inspired by the artist Bebo.